after treatment systems are changing once again for GHG 27. We're gonna to talk to the Cummins crew about the X15 GHG 27 after treatment system. We got a two module after treatment system. There are electric heaters involved. There are gonna be some changes and there are gonna be some things that stay the same. Let's find out what those are. We're gonna take a deep dive into the after treatment system and we're gonna kick it off with a question on reliability because I think it's the first question when it comes to after treatment that many customers and fleets ask. So tell me about the reliability features of the new after treatment system on the X15 GHG 27. Sure, so with the, the twin module after treatment system, the biggest way we are improving or maintaining reliability is by sticking with what we know is battle tested and our proven tried and true solutions. So. The after treatment solution is still the DOC, DPF, single def dosing and SCR technology that is tried and true, that we've proven as a successful strategy in the market. So we're not changing that, that's still our core. The new thing with EPA 27 are the electric heaters at the inlet of both assemblies. And naturally the question would be, that sounds challenging from a reliability standpoint to be adding electric heaters. Right. So we've taken a lot of intention and thought in making sure that this is as reliable as possible and you can see that in two ways one is by what's not here we're not relying on a battery with this design so we're minimizing weight and minimizing overall complexity by not using a battery the system is powered by the 48 volt generator on the engine the other way is we searched the market in commercial heavy duty to find a heater that could power our system and we couldn't find anything that met our standards for durability and reliability at Cummins. So we take the design of these in-house and we've actually made these ourselves within Cummins Emission Solutions. So now we're confident that this design can meet the aggressive emissions useful life um, and maintain that reliability that everyone comes to expect with Cummins. Right, okay, so you got electric heaters there. So you're, you're heating up the exhaust gas even more than we're accustomed to, that's right? right? And that's to bring those emissions down? We have to, right. With EPA 27, the NOx limits are slashed by almost 80%. We're obviously not gonna add 80% more catalyst. Right. So we have to find a way to heat that exhaust without increasing the size of our system to a ridiculous scale. We're actually only adding about 20% more catalyst by leveraging the electric heating technology to get those temperatures up in all conditions. We're talking cold startup, low load, uh, idling. Uh, that's when the NOx is the worst, and that's when we must capture it. So with the heaters, we can use the kind of like an on-demand approach. Okay. We can apply heat when we need it, where we need it, and that's gonna help us as a system with the engine maximize our fuel economy. I see, very cool. Well, a lot going on here as well. Take me through some of the other big features in the new system. Sure. So the most obvious physical difference is there are now two assemblies. Our current product is just one single module, so we're moving to a twin module. We've designed it in separate assemblies with the customer in mind, so the, this is the most common way you'll see them put together, but they can actually be rotated and, and configured in a wide variety of ways, so the installation onto the chassis is, is hopefully more easy for the customer. Um, the other notable difference is the SCR catalyst. So we have a separate SCR assembly and it has a dual, des or a dual flow design, so the catalyst ru catalysts run in parallel. We've done this for multiple reasons. Uh, one is it reduces back pressure. Back pressure, think of how the system breathes through the after treatment. If it had one long tube, it would be more difficult to breathe through. So we've put them in a parallel flow. Um, the other is length, like I mentioned. We don't want to add any more space than we need to, keeping the, the space claim in mind. But the most important one is this design is best for thermal management. Uh, by having the parallel flow, we're minimizing heat loss. Again, heat is our primary focus on getting those level, uh, NOx levels really low. Right, for sure. You touched on it a little bit too. I want to go back to maintenance because I think maintenance is another focus in after treatment sure. system. Um, what are the expected maintenance points on the system going forward? So despite all these changes, there's still only two serviceable features on the after treatment. The, the, DPF, um, the DPF filter is still the main serviceable item. The useful life limits of these filters are increasing though, so up to half a million miles, oh, wow. and the okay. service intervals are not changing. So there's okay. the DPF, and there's also the DEF filter. Other than that, we're not expecting any scheduled maintenance for the heating system. In the unfortunate event that something should happen and one of them is damaged, we have a, 
um, attach them with a V-band clamp. So you would not have to replace the entire expensive catalyst. You could only replace the module with the heater. I see, very good. Well, and also kind of nice that when there are a lot of changes coming down the line, anything that can remain the same is kind of nice, I think, exactly. for customers, That's right? We're trying to stick with our similar architecture that everyone's familiar with, and we're just supplementing it with the heating system. Right. Okay, so, you know, let's back up a little bit and walk me through the, the emissions regulation standpoint here, because every time it jumps on the EPA side, it's amazing that you're able to crank the emissions down this far, I right? Know. But from that operational fleet side, what does this mean in practical terms for fleet circuit? going to be operating this system? Sure. We now know that carbon tends to align with EPA on the 2027 regulations. So this product will be a 50 state compliant solution on the entire X15 system. So from a fleet operator perspective, they no longer have to worry about being CARB certified and EPA certified and having the right stickers on their vehicle. Uh, this is a solution that they can drive and operate across the entire country. Right. Perfect. Well, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very it. much.